Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if this is your first time tuning in. I am Jillian Barry, and in today's video, I am so excited. We have my fellow raw vegan friend, Shane Sterling, on to talk about how to turn your passion into your business. He is so experienced with this. He has done this many times over as his passions have changed in life. And what I love about Shane is he not only has a very deep spiritual side, but he's a very savvy businessman as well. And in my opinion, the two go hand in hand. So we are going to have a great discussion today. You will want to stick around to the end. Let's get started and say hello to Shane. Hey, Shane, how's it going? Hi, Jillian. Hello. Thank you so hey. much for having me on. I always appreciate speaking with you so much. Fellow raw vegans. Hooray. Yes. And I love speaking with you. Yeah. And this topic is particularly close to my heart because I am an entrepreneur. I love turning my passions into an income. And I really believe in freedom business models. We don't have to slave away and work hard. We can actually have abundance, be on purpose, live into our mission and help people and make money at the same time, like the, the, the holy trinity and have like a life of abundance and make a difference for people. And I'm really passionate about that. And I've been working at it my whole life. So I love this topic. I love it. And you're so inspiring, Shane. I would first like to start out with maybe a background for the viewers. Because I know right now you have a raw vegan business. You're so passionate about health and wellness and the raw vegan lifestyle. And you have turned this into, I believe, multiple sources of income. And you're thriving and completely successful at it. And I mean, going to be even more successful in the future, I'm sure. But I mean, from, from what I've heard, you've done this many times in the past. So maybe if you could give us a background on that, that would be wonderful. Yeah, thanks. So I first uh, started my very first business when I was 24 years old. And I've pretty much been self-employed ever since with little stints of taking jobs here and there to just kind of bridge the gap. But at 24 years old, I realized I had to make money for myself because I was a terrible employee. I either got yelled at or fired from every job that I had. I'm highly intelligent, highly perceptive, you know, uh, uh, have a great work ethic. But when I work for someone else, I just see too much and I, I don't know, it's like I always was in conflict with management and other things like that. In fact, I have a memory of working at a record store when I was 19 and I, I, made, I, I upset the boss somehow and he came up to me and he yelled in my face, like this close to my face and he screamed at the top of his lungs at me. You know, I'm a good person. I have no ill intent to, toward anybody. And it was kind of at that moment that was one of the turning points where I realized I really should be self-employed. So at 24, I started a photography business. I took out a loan from the bank for $7,000. I didn't even have any collateral or any even way to get a loan. I had to ask my girlfriend's mom at the time if she could co-sign on the loan because she had a house and I had no way to even get a loan. So I begged. I was like, please help me out. Co-sign on this loan. I promise I won't let you down. She co-signed on the loan. I got $7,000. I bought all this photography equipment, like a whole studio worth of photography equipment. And I started renting out the studio to other photographers and doing portraiture in the work, in the studio and all these things and was able to pay my rent with my own income for the first time in my life. And I was 24 years old. So that started me on my entrepreneurial path. That's awesome. And I think that's, I think that really a lot of people can relate to that because I think there's so many people doing jobs they don't want to be doing and they're, they have a hard time working for other people and feeling controlled by other people. So I think that's really inspiring. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so, um, as an entrepreneur, as someone who's looking for a freedom lifestyle, we have to just pursue our passion. My passion at the time was photography, but our passions change, you know? And then by the time I was in my mid thirties, my passion at the time was clothing resale. I got, I had a passion for clothing resale. And so I started to pick thrift stores, flea markets, yard sales, um, estate sales, and I would get vintage clothing and clothing that was unique or of high quality in some way. And I would flip it. I would sell it um, at trade shows and things. And I was so successful at it that I actually realized that I should open a store. So I found a physical location in the town I was living at at the time. I started my business, I called it Funk and Flash because I was doing vintage and costume kind of clothing. And in my first 
Well, I had invested quite a bit of money to get this business up off the ground. It was all on credit cards. I was way overextended. It was very scary. And my opening day, the first day I was open for business, I put out my racks of clothing. I had a cash register. <laughs> and the first day I made like $12,000. People were so interested. I was like, $12,000, that pays my rent. And that covers like all these other expenses that I had accrued. So in my first year of that business, I made like $250,000. And by year three, I had made $600,000 flipping resale clothing. So that was one of the highlight success stories uh, for me was making that much money off of my passion of like clothing resale. I know there's a lot of people that love flipping, you know, picking vintage thrift things and trying to flip it on eBay or make money. I made $600,000 in one year, flipping things out of thrift stores and yard sales. So we can do what our passion is. You know, I have, um, I really believe that if we just apply ourselves, we can accomplish that. So that's one of my success stories. That's absolutely incredible. And I think you had a great point there too. Talk about well, congratulations on how much you made and all your success. And I mean, what's better than making money doing something you love truly? And I think you had a great point saying our passion changes. So I think there's so many people that get stuck and think they have to do things forever. Maybe they feel like they've invested so much time, so they don't want to let something go. Like even I can personally relate to that. I've been doing real estate since I graduated university, but it's definitely not my passion anymore at all. I don't hate it, but it's, it's easy. I love dealing with the clients, but it's definitely not my passion. I'm not passionate about it. When I do it, I think, when is this going to be over? When is, you know, I'm, and then when I work on my channel or all the health stuff, that's my greatest passion in life. So I think what stops a lot of people from going from A to B is their fears. So I think there's a lot of limiting beliefs we have, and we have fears that making that change it, there's a lot of things that hold us back. And I know you're super knowledgeable when you speak about this. So I would love for you to talk a little bit about the things that hold us back and how to get over those fears and those limiting beliefs that hold us back from truly pursuing our passion and doing what we love every day. Oh, goodness. That is such a great question. And it's one of my um, deepest pursuits in life. And it's one of my greatest passions in life is understanding how to overcome my own fears and not hold myself back. <clears throat> you know, when I started my clothing store that I was just telling you about, the opening day, I was so nervous. I was so scared that I was going to fail that I had a moving truck. I was moving my racks of clothing into the store and I had rented this moving truck. I was so nervous and so out of sorts and so ungrounded because of how freaked out I was that I was doing this, that I, that I, wrecked the moving truck that day no My, way. the opening day Shane, no way wow i wrecked the moving truck i i went around a corner and i caught like the side of a building and i ripped a hole in the side of the moving truck all the way down and i didn't get insurance for the rental truck so i had to pay out of pocket for that and it was just like this lesson of like no matter how scared we are of pursuing our passions we just need to do it the universe will work out. So I made a, th a $12,000 in my opening day. Like I said, I made enough to pay for the repair of that truck in my opening day. You know, we're always provided for if we pursue our passions. What really is the problem is when we don't pursue our passions and we don't listen to the calling in our heart and we're not in that amazing creative space that we're all designed to be in. When we don't listen, life gets harder and harder. It, you know, the universe starts to clamp down on us or, you know, it feels more difficult and more challenging. And if we don't listen, life just gets really hard. And then maybe we become depressed and cut off and we resign and we give up on life, you know, and that's the danger. So we have to stay in this like beautiful creativity and this dance, this co-creative dance with the universe. Mm -hmm. If we can do that, it doesn't matter if we fail. You know, I really believe that there is no failing. There's only failing forward, maybe, because our failures teach us more than our success does. Mm -hmm. So it's important to fail. You know, one of the mantras I live by is, um, you know, one of my inspirations, Brian Eno. He's a famous musician. I don't know for anybody who knows Brian Eno. 
anyway, he's very artistic and he was very influential to a lot of musicians. But he, he, I saw in an interview once, he said that his dad, his father told him, son, go out in the world and fail. And if you, when you fail, you have a place to come home to, don't worry about it, just go fail. And you know, that's one of the most brilliant things. He said that, now Brian Eno had a huge impact on music and art and culture because he wasn't afraid to fail. His dad gave him that permission. So we need somebody in our life at some point, if we're blessed enough, to have somebody just say, go the hell out there and fail. Don't be afraid of it. And I didn't have that with my family or my father, but we find the, the messages we need in life. So I'm giving you right now, the viewers, that message. Go out and fail. Do not be afraid to fail. Follow your heart. Pursue your passions. It's waiting for you. You know, the, the seed of possibility that God put in our heart, if we... The dream, the fulfillment of the dream is in the dream itself. If we have a dream, that means it's already there. It's already existing in a parallel dimension. We just have to align with it and it becomes reality. Seriously, um, it's like quantum physics. If we have the thought that, oh, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a clothing designer. I want to be a health coach. It's already done. We are feeling the, the, what's already in existence, we just have to align and get out of our own way. So that's why we have to be willing to fail because then we're allowing our energetics to align with the potential that's already in existence. That's how I live my life. That's how I think about it. Mm -hmm. I think that's so beautiful and very well said. And I just want to bring up a point too, for anybody who doesn't know, I know Shane through a private group he runs. So that's what he currently does, a Raw Vegan Heroes membership group, which is a private group. It's a group that he and others add so much value to. And that's where I know Shane. So I just want to say, I've also been thinking about starting a group. Like you've really inspired me to do that. But then still there's those fears. What if you only have a couple members? And I think that's a common fear a lot of people have. What if I start a business and there's no people? But I think of every, everything you've just said is so true. And I think there's no failing until you quit, really. And even then, maybe it's not a failure. There's still so much growth and so much learning involved with that as well. Yes, absolutely. Um so my first business was my photography little, you know, studio. And then my second business was my clothing store, Funk and Flash. And my third big business in life, which I'm currently running right now, is my health coaching, which is Raw Vegan Rising. And that's the company. And how I help people is my group membership called Raw Vegan Heroes, which Jillian is a member of. And you have been, I think, since I started it, Jillian. And I'm just so grateful okay. for you. Um, and I just admire you and respect you so much. And you know what? I love the group. It's great because the the industry we're in, the industry we're in, and the diet, the raw vegan lifestyle. There's not many people who eat this way, so it can sometimes feel like a lonely lifestyle. And the group it really gives you that sense of community, and it really does help keep you on track. It's amazing, and I like how it's a private group. You you post things, and you don't feel like the whole world can see it if you want to post post private things, and it's really wonderful. Yeah. So when we want to go from point A, where we are, to point B, where we want to be in our growth, in our business, in our job, in our life, our health, our inspiration, we have to have accountability. So you'll hear every single entrepreneur, high performer, high achiever in life say the same thing. The way we go from where we are to where we want to go is accountability. We have to have accountability in our life, someone, some, a group, a person, a mentor of some sort to help show us what's possible. If we leave it to the default world around us, we're going to end up with the same results that we, that everyone around us has. So our friends and family, you know, as much as we love them, might not have the income, the, the impact, the health that we want. Therefore, we have to consciously seek out a community, a group, or a mentor, or a coach of some sort to put us in a different mindset, a different sense of possibility. I call it the crab bucket. The crab bucket is an analogy for the environment that we find ourselves in. I should tell the crab bucket story right now really quick because it's just so inspiring. It really puts it into perspective. This is why my Raw Vegan uh, Heroes group works. It's because of the crab bucket. So there's a, a, a fisherman on a pier and there's a guy walking by him and he sees a bucket of crabs. The fisherman is fishing crabs. And the guy says to the fisherman, 
you have to put a lid on that bucket of crabs because the crabs are going to climb out. And the fisherman says to the guy, no, I don't have to put a lid on that bucket of crabs because if one crab tries to climb out of that bucket, all the other crabs reach up and pull them back down in. That's the crab bucket effect. We unconsciously all pull ourselves back down into these environments we find ourselves in. So to create a new crab bucket means that we can create the success we want. Look, as someone who turns my passions into income consistently throughout my life, it's because I surround myself with people who think differently, who are entrepreneurs who have done this themselves. It's important. So if you want to be raw vegan, if you want to heal a health problem or change your lifestyle for the better, we have to be around a different crab bucket, people who are also on that path. That's why Raw Vegan Heroes works. And Jillian, this is why I started Raw Vegan Heroes, because I have learned as an entrepreneur over the course of my life that if we can provide an environment for others, an accountability environment, they can go from where they are to where they want to be the quickest. So it provides the most support possible. Absolutely. And I love that analogy. I absolutely love it. I think it's really important too the people you surround yourself with when you're trying to when you're trying to switch your life from maybe something you're not passionate about to focusing on your passion full time. Yeah, it's absolutely essential. And, um, you know, there's what I call the lone wolf syndrome, which is when we say, well, I can do it on my own. I, you know, I've always been an independent person. Um, I don't need to be indoctrinated by group mentality. Um, all these things, our ego is so strong. It's so pervasive in our thoughts and our ego will talk us out of what we need most. I'm going to say it right now to any of you who are watching this. If you don't have the income you want in your life, if you don't have the health, the environment, the love relationships, the house, the material success that you want in your life, it's because you are playing in the lone wolf syndrome saying, I can do this on my own. We Really, if you could do it on your own, you'd already have it. So, so there are points in our life when we need to strategically choose to seek mentorship for the growth that we're looking for. So if we're looking for financial growth, we should seek a financial mentor. If we're looking for health growth, we should seek a health mentor. Mentorship is an ancient art of apprenticeship, essentially. It's like learning how to be a cobbler or a blacksmith. There's just practical steps that we need to learn from other people to go from where we are to where we want to be. And lone wolf syndrome is the sabotager because it's the isolation. Isolation is like the devil's playground. When we self-isolate, we are in a low self-worth conversation. When we self-isolate, we are um, deprecating ourselves. When we self-isolate, we're saying, I'm not worthy of having the success that I truly feel I deserve. We can't self-isolate. And so the lone wolf syndrome is the opposite of the crab bucket. Like we need to be in a crab bucket of like-minded individuals. And um, the lone wolf syndrome is pervasive and I encounter it almost every single day in my line of work, talking to people from all over the world who contact me wanting help, wanting to change their life for the better. And I encounter it frequently where people just shut themselves down and say, well, I can't be part of a group. I can't seek mentorship. I can't afford coaching. I can't do this. I can't, I can't, I can't. So the mind will talk us out of what we need most if we don't overcome it consciously. Mm -hmm. So that kind of brings me to the point of the lack mentality. I know some people have a hard time getting their heads around making the money and they, they sort of have this lack mentality where they don't think they can make enough money or maybe they don't have enough money to pursue their passion. So what do you think is the best way for them to sort of transfer that lack mentality to something of an abundance mentality? Do you think it is like the mentor, getting a mentor like you were talking about, things like that, or and maybe working on the subconscious mind? Yeah, good point, Jillian. Really, it is the subconscious mind is so powerful. So <clears throat> To go from a lack mentality to an abundance mentality, to go from someone who's struggling in any capacity with our health, our finances, just self-esteem, like your place in the world, to go from someone who's struggling to someone who's thriving and loves their life and is effective and successful, you have to align 
your, your subconscious mind. So what I do personally is I focus on the vision and not the circumstance. I talk about this a lot, but the vision is our, is our, the pictures we're showing ourselves in our mind. Say we want a house, okay, we wanna buy a house, million dollar house. Let's show ourselves the pictures of the million dollar house, the color on the walls, the tiles on the floor, the smells, you know, the, the sound of the gravel walking up to the door, whatever it is, we gotta get really, really, really specific. And we hold the vision of what we want to create. Now, what we don't do is we don't focus on how am I gonna afford a million dollar house? We do not focus on that. Because the second you focus on the how, you've lost the vision. And now you're no longer capable of manifesting abundance in your life because you're focused on the lack. If you focus on, well, I can't afford a million dollar house, you just told yourself you're incapable of generating, you're incapable of having that vision. But if you say, I'm gonna have that million dollar house. There's no question I'm gonna have that million dollar house. Well, that sounds pretty good. The universe knows how to, let's say, organize around the, vig the vision we have. And it's around the pictures specifically in our head. So our pictures that we show ourselves in our mind turn into our thoughts and our thoughts turn into our words and our words turn into our actions and our choices and our impact in the world. So it's very important that we show ourselves the pictures of what life we truly want. And this way we can heal all disease, we can be a raw vegan. This is why I'm raw, raw vegan, just so you guys know. I'm sharing like some of the inner secrets of how I do this, is I just show myself pictures of what I want. I show myself pictures of myself happy, um, fulfilled, successful, um, all the physical things that I want, the material success, the physical health success, all of it. And the how doesn't really concern me so much. You know, I know if I focus on my passions, I will generate the results that I'm looking for, period. So there's a saying that I live by as an entrepreneur. If it's meant to be, it is up to me. So if I'm going to start that business, if I'm going to, you know, find the love relationship I've always wanted, if I'm going to heal my health problems and be radiantly healthy and be a beautiful example for my friends and family, it's up to me. I've got to create it. I've got to get off my ass now and I've got to do what it takes to align. It's not about hard work. It's about alignment. And so aligning our energy with what we want is how we get what we want. There's a saying that I love that is we don't get what we want. We get who we are, who we are. So if you want to attract abundance, something you currently don't have, you have to be it. You have mm -hmm. to like feel the gratitude of having it. So that's another technique for manifesting a million dollar house. Feel the gratitude for what it's like to have that million dollar house. Mm -hmm. Be in that, like the moment you say, oh, look, I just got the keys to my million dollar house. Wow. How does that feel? stay in that feeling. That feeling is the beingness. The being is what you get, not what you want. And want is a perpetual uh, state of lack. If you want something, you'll never have it. Yeah. You can't want something. Yeah. I agree with all of this. I study all of this. I love it. I feel like these are the laws of the universe. And I do feel like some people feel like their lives are just so far from what they want. They're not focusing on what they love. And maybe they just feel like it's completely opposite to what their dream life would be and what they want. And maybe they have a hard time sort of visualizing, focusing on their passion or visualizing their dream life or getting into those feelings. So what do you think for those people? I think maybe gratitude, like you mentioned, is one of the best ways to sort of try improve and get to where you want to be but what do you think well we have to feel gratitude so again you're right jillian yeah we have to feel gratitude to move to the next level if we feel like we're screwed over by life and that we don't have what we need if we feel truly like we're in lack like wow this life is hard i'm never going to have what i need i'm never going to have that dream life that i desire you're never going to. But instead, if you flip it around and you say, I'm so grateful for what I do have, and I'm going to tend and nurture everything that I do have. Okay, this crappy apartment that I rent that I hate, I'm going to love this crappy apartment. I'm going to decorate it beautiful. I'm going to love it up. That's gratitude. And then you get to graduate to the next level. 
which is maybe a, a bigger apartment, and then to that million dollar house, you know? So it's gratitude is what leads us. It's essential to be in gratitude because again, we attract who we are. So gratitude puts us in a state of being that we want to be in. And, um, you know, hey, besides that, we've just got to claim it sometimes. Let's stop being passive in our life and start claiming it and saying, look, I have this seed that God placed in my heart. I have a dream. I know what I need to do. And yeah, it's scary. Yeah, it's hard. But I'm going to figure out how to do this because the world needs me. And, you know, if, if there was a message for anybody listening right now, it's that the seed that is planted in your heart is highly needed in this world. And you never, never underestimate the impact you can make. I see people make the mistake all the time of saying, well, what does it matter what I do? The world is screwed up anyway. Like why bother going vegan? The animals are going to be killed in those slaughterhouses anyway. It's not true. We make a huge impact. Each one of us, I make a big impact. People can see that, you know, from the people who follow me and subscribe to my YouTube videos, they can see I make a big impact. We all do. Every single person is, is needed here. So we can't underestimate the, the value that we have that is placed in us. We are born with value. So connecting with our self-worth is part of that gratitude. It's like saying, I am worthy of sharing my gifts. I am worthy of people listening to me and hearing my gifts. I am worthy of being a leader. I am worthy of making an impact, making a difference. If you're not making a difference right now in your life, whoever's listening, at the impact level you want, it's because you are not letting yourself feel worthy of it. That's the bottom line. Absolutely. I agree. And I want to ask you too, I was just thinking, what about, what about the people who feel like they don't necessarily know what their passion is? They know they're not happy living the life they want, but no matter what their age is, they have no idea what they're passionate about. Do you have any tips as to how they could discover their passions? I know for me, like the raw vegan diet was a big thing to sort of like you talk about getting alignment with who I truly am. And really, that's when I've really felt I'm most passionate, where I sort of know what my passions are now. What do you think are ways that people might take to discover their passion if they don't know? Jillian, it's such a great question. That is such an important question, because I think most people don't know what their passion is. I have some tips on this that I think are actually probably pretty helpful. For one, one way that we can find our purpose in life is to be the person we needed when we were 10 years old. When, when I was 10 years old, who did I need to show up in my life? Who did I need so desperately? That is who I am today. I'm the man. I'm the leader. I am the, the visionary that I needed, my, that my 10-year-old self needed so desperately that my parents, my dad didn't provide to me you know, and then it's taken me all this time, 40 years <laughs> to be the leader, to be that person. And that makes me feel so on purpose. So think back when you were 10 years old, who did you need to show up in your life? Who did you need? Be that person. Okay. That's one tip. Also, the wound is where the light enters us. Our wounding, where we are originally wounded, the deepest wounding that we've experienced in our life, whether it's abuse or abandonment, no matter what a trauma that we've experienced, that is where we serve from. If we can tap into where we've been wounded, feel the wound, okay? Because most of the time we're avoiding our wounds desperately. We don't want to feel it. But if you can connect with your original wounding, the deepest wounding, and, and feel how that wants to be expressed and shared, that's going to be your purpose work. That's going to be where you can make the most impact, healing yourself, helping others, and providing the most inspiration. That's what I do. The reason I'm a raw vegan coach and help people with their health is because when I was young, I was seriously wounded around the state of the world. I felt so unsafe in the world. And as a young teenager, I saw the abuse of animals and the military industrial complex and just the craziness of the world. And I said, this is not a safe place. And it was very wounding to me. So when I, as an adult, when I connect, when I say, where's my original wounding? I go back to that place where I went vegan out of reaction to desperation. 
And now as an adult, I want to reconcile that wounding. I want to say, well, let's make the vegan message accessible. Let's turn that into a healing mission. Let's turn that into, you know, we can heal the world through ourselves. And so that's my mission. I'm here to, I, I'm here to like heal my original wounding by helping others. And it works. I stepped onto this path fully when I was 44 years old, which was four years ago, where I really finally decided there was a decisive moment where I said, I'm no longer going to play small. I'm no longer going to pretend that, that I'm acting in my self-worth. I'm going to align with how to heal my original wounding and I'm going to serve others from that place of wounding. That's it. Bam. That's what I did. And that's what's led me to this moment. Robbie Gin Heroes, my group, my uh, business currently has birthed from that decisive action to serve others from my original wounding. So... That's very beautiful. Very well said. And I, I love how you said that about serving, because I feel like that's how you truly inspire and become successful in life is thinking how you can serve others and how you can add value to others, not necessarily what you can always get, what you can get, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. My business coach who I hired for um, six years, very successful um, coach. And she trained people how to be coaches. She always said, that if you want to make more money, serve more people. It's really that simple. And uh, her words always resonate and resound in my head like an echo chamber. If you want to make more money, serve more people. Figure out how to serve people. You know, with my clothing store, and I, when I look back at my life, I, the, more, the most money I've ever made is because I was serving the most people. It's just darn true. And so now at this point in my life, that's all I think about is how can I serve people better? I mean, it, you know, for better or for worse, Jeff Bezos, who has the most successful business in the world with amazon.com, serves a lot of people. He solves a lot of problems for people. You know, one day shipping, prime shipping. I mean, this is functional. This solves problems and serves people. And if you listen to Jeff Bezos talk as an entrepreneur, um, he always talks about the user experience. He always talks about the, what the customer's experience is like. That's a service-oriented frame of mind. So I always watch and listen to entrepreneurs because I'm passionate about entrepreneurship. And you see it across the board, not just Jeff Bezos, but every single entrepreneur talks about how, is, how can I serve the customer better? How can I serve better? You know, And if, if we haven't even figured out how to serve anyone at all, that's the first step. Figure out how to serve people. Literally get down on your knees and wash people's feet. I mean, literally, we got to serve people. We, we have to get out of our own way, be selfless, and <clears throat> help people get results. You want to make money, help someone else make money. You know, you want to get healthy, help someone else get healthy. That's how we do it. And then from there, we want to continue to ask the question, how can I serve better? Exactly. I agree with all of that. And I love it. Very well said. I want to say too, I think what stops a lot of people from maybe pursuing their passion is they feel they are too old. I know that was for me when I started my YouTube channel this year, I thought maybe I'm too old at 39, which maybe sounds crazy, but I mean, once you get in your late thirties, forties, fifties, maybe you feel like you're too old to pursue your passion. But then I see Bob Proctor, he is just thriving on YouTube. And I mean, you're an example. You started a new business in your mid forties, I believe, right? That's when you started all your raw vegan stuff. Yep. Mid forties. So I just want to ask, what would you say to somebody who feels like they are too old to maybe pursue their passions? Because I think we're never too old and I would love to hear your thoughts and some inspiration on that. It's so important, Jillian. Yeah. We are not done with our mission here on earth until we die. I mean, the, the, the service, the mission, the message that we have in our hearts is needed. We have to bring it out. So um, who was it who like Louise Hay, who, who like um, started writing books for Hay House in her 70s. I mean, Louise Hay, one of the you know, foremost self-help, personal development leaders in our world, started her self-development work at, in her 70s. So there's never, it's never too late a time to live into our passion. This is where we really want to be intuitive 
creative people. Creativity is like, it's like having a perspective. It's like having a bird's eye perspective. You know, we're able to see the past and the future simultaneously and shift and move and do the dance with the universe. Creativity really is important. If we can stay in our creativity and in our creative flow, we're going to see that we can jump from this career to that career. We can change our mind. We can ebb and flow. We can do the dance with the universe because we're always finding new inspirations. We're always evolving as new people and we don't want to stay stagnant or stuck in some modality that, that we think we have to because that's not fulfilling so how cool is it that louise hay started her career as a personal development guru at the in the, her 70s so yeah. that's creativity though she she's she's in her creativity you mm -hmm. know and creativity expands our capacity to be um, able to make moves like that in our life. So what is um, expanded creative capacity? Where does that come from? I mean, I think it comes from intuition. I think we have to really be in tune with our intuition. We have to have a lot of faith that the universe is divinely conspiring on our behalf, that the universe is always smiling upon us. We have to have gratitude and I think this is where being a raw vegan comes in. I will have to plug the raw vegan lifestyle right here because there's, for me, it's a baseline. I have to eat 100% raw to just be at the baseline of gratitude, creativity, intuition, doing the dance with the universe. Because if I eat cooked food, if I eat processed food, and especially animal products, I start to go into funks and loops and ruts and my, I can't be in this expanded creativity, this expanded capacity. So for me, being raw vegan is, a, is a, not just a diet and a lifestyle. It's a declaration to the universe that I want expanded capacity. I want expanded creativity and intuition. That's it. So I can make more money, serve more people, mm. be happier and healthier, make the biggest difference in the world and so being raw vegan is the ticket it's cool mm -hmm. whoever's listening right now if you haven't gone raw vegan that is a great place to start for more success more happiness more fulfillment on on a really meaningful purposeful spiritual level it is that's what's changed my life the most and i feel like i think you've said it before and it's exactly how i feel being raw vegan you feel so aligned in alignment with yourself and then you get more creative. And I mean, I think creativity is so important. We are creators. It's so important we create. And I think when people don't create and focus on their passions, that's when it's very easy to, I think, get into substance abuse or kind of overeating or maybe not eat the right thing. So I think they go hand in hand eating well. And I mean, everything's not diet, obviously, but eating well and I mean, being creative and going after your passion. I think it's very easy to get on the wrong track. I think we have to claim it, you know, and there's a point where, okay, we could go raw vegan and descend into some, you know, restricted eating disorder, or we use the power of our mind to show ourselves the images of our highest success. And we don't worry about the details of how we get there. And we don't worry about the how we just focus on those amazing pictures that we show ourselves and that's it. And so we want to be successful as a raw vegan. We just do it. We claim it. We want to make more money in our life and be physically, materially successful. We just show ourselves the pictures and we claim it. The only reason someone did, would descend into eating disorders or that like self-sabotaging lack consciousness is because they are in despair. They're not in tune with their self-worth. They're not claiming their self-worth and they're just self-sabotaging. And most likely hand in hand with an eating disorder or substance abuse or any kind of depression or anxiety or mental disorder, along with that is gonna come isolation, really truly isolation. So we need to reach out to Crab Buckets mentors that can support us with who we want to be. So that's where the Raw Vegan Heroes community steps in, helps for so many people to get the inspiration to be raw vegan. You can join the Raw Vegan Heroes community and be around hundreds of other people who are on this healing journey too with raw food. Now that's going to show you, and you can say, oh, look, Susie is, has been raw now for six months. Wow, I could be raw for six months. When you see other people doing it, it gives you permission to do it. Now, if we're in mental disorder mode, that's because we're not 
giving ourselves that level of support. So accountability and support is our personal responsibility if we're gonna be successful. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. It's not gonna happen because we're sitting on our ass and feeling sorry for ourselves. It's gonna happen because we decide it's gonna happen. And through that decisive personal leadership, we can make anything happen no matter what it is. We can literally move mountains, create Fortune 500 companies, create millions of dollars, whatever it is, it's literally up to us. But the biggest block, the biggest stumbling block for me in my own life and everybody I know and every entrepreneur I know, the biggest stumbling block is personal development. It's feeling worthy. It's you know believing in the power of our mind to create our reality and just, and honestly, feeling that we're deserving of the success. How many people stop dead cold in their tracks because they look at the success that they could create and they like are like, whoa, who am I? Who am I to be successful? Who am I to be someone that has authority in my voice, in my message? Who am I to excel past my mother or my father or my sister or brother who I love very much? Who am I to be more successful than them? Our success is more scary than our failure. And that's the thing that stops us most. The way we get past this though is personal development. It's literally personal development, which means we're facing our fears, facing our shadow, facing our traumas, and deciding that we are gonna be the leaders of our life and no one else is gonna do it for us. Completely self-referenced, completely in self-actualization. That's how we have to do it. There's no other way. If you wanna be an entrepreneur, if you wanna be successful, you wanna make money, you wanna be a raw vegan, this is what we've got to do. And um, I personally live by it. This is what I do in my life without question. I agree. Well said. And I just want to say, I mean, you have it all together, Shane, right? So have you personally, if you don't mind me asking, had to deal with these things like feelings of worthiness and things like that when you've entered new businesses? I'm assuming these are things you've all had to deal with because you speak so well on them at this point. And I think that's probably through learning, right? I really literally would not be able to speak about it if it wasn't my life, a daily life. I live this every single day, day in and day out. I face my fears consciously every day. I'm always in a stretch. I'm always in a growth edge. I'm always uncomfortable. I literally am because I don't have the life that I fully want yet, you know? I want to serve more people. I want to make a bigger impact with my business, with Raw Vegan Heroes. I want more members in Raw Vegan Heroes and serve, to serve them better. And <clears throat> because I don't have that, I am willing to get out of my comfort zone every day and stretch myself into places that I haven't been before. If we want to get different results, we've got to do diff different things. And so I'm not complacent. It's very uncomfortable. You know, it's like we have to learn how to create from uncertainty because the world is uncertain and it always will be and it always has been. You know, with the state of the world today, we can see so much chaos, so much unknown, so much uncertainty. If you can find a way to create and to generate results, generate content, generate meaningful messages for people while standing on shifting sands and the uncertainty of reality, you will be a powerful leader. And that's what I do. So <clears throat> life is uncertain for me and everybody. But what I do is I just say, I'm going to just go in, go within, generate results, generate messages, generate content, and be someone who speaks a message of stability, truth, conviction, hope, faith, in spite of all of the unknowns. So, yeah. Beautiful. And I just want to say, I mean, you're obviously so well-spoken. Do you have, I'm curious, a couple of favorite books, a couple of your, what are your, a couple of your favorite books? Oh boy. So I have an Amazon store that allows people to see uh, my top favorite books and also um, things I use as a raw vegan. So my Amazon store is where I would direct people because I have all my favorite books in there under the, the section is called inspiring books. So my Amazon store is amazon.com slash shop slash raw vegan rising. Uh, maybe I'll put a link in the description. If, it's, if this is on my YouTube channel, there's a link in the description. Um, but the, my number one book in that section is The Fourth Turning 
Okay, it's actually not even a book on diet or health. All the other ones are. Oh no, the top two books, The Fourth Turning and A Course in Miracles. Uh, the Fourth Turning is about the seasons that our generations go through and the turning of time and the seculum, it's called. It's a brilliant book. It's probably the most important book I've ever read in my life. And it helps me be who I am. Definitely helps me be an entrepreneur because it shows me the, the role that my generation plays in the outcome of society. And then A um, Course in Miracles is so profound because it helps break down the ego helps us realize how the ego is out to kill us, essentially, and out to sabotage us on a deep level. So I love A Course in Miracles because I'm battling my ego every day. To be a successful entrepreneur, I have to overcome my ego. And that book has helped me do that profoundly. So that's my number two book. And then um, number three and beyond are diet and lifestyle books around uh, raw food. So you can go check out all my favorite books over there at, at the Amazon store. Mm -hmm. I love A Course in Miracles. I've read that too. It's amazing. It changed my life a couple of years ago. It's a really good book. Yeah, it so, is. There's, there's a lot of good books and it's really about um, what gets us results in life. You know, whatever helps us mm -hmm. overcome our own limitations. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. Like I also love The Essene Gospel of Peace is one of my big ones. And so many people say, oh, that's been debunked. That's not true. Uh, you know, that's, it's false information. So, I mean, if you go online and research the Essene Gospel of Peace, you will see conflicting information, but you know what? That book has given me so much confidence and truth and hope, and it's been so inspiring. It doesn't matter what's true or not. That book has changed my life and helped me be a better um, person and a, and a successful raw vegan. And so that's what we're looking for. If a book gives you inspiration, it doesn't matter. You know, we just need those triggers, the things to catalyze us into the next step of our personal development. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I would love to talk next uh, a little bit about education. I know there's a lot of people who are super passionate about something, but they feel like maybe they should have a degree in it, but really they could practice it and do it and maybe offer so much to the world without that degree, but maybe it's holding them back because they feel like they should have the degree. But I think there's something to say about self-education, especially this day and age. I mean, some of the most successful people are self-educated. So I just want to hear your thoughts around self-education and maybe somebody, maybe they're not pursuing their passion because they feel like they have to have this expensive four or five year degree on it technically to get out there and provide a service. It's so important to bring that up, Jillian. <laughs> it's so important because so many people think they have to be certified in a certain method to be able to teach or practice. And really anyone, okay, here's the bottom line. Anyone who is giving a certification or a degree has just made it up out of thin air. There is no authority outside of us. All authority is just given by somebody who claims they have authority. Literally, look, if we just can dismantle this fabric of our society, we will just see that we're all just people. It's those who are in their personal leadership the most that say, well, I will certify you because right now I could come up with a, a, a health coach certification program. I would just make it up out of thin air. And I'd say here, I can certify you in being a health coach, but it doesn't mean that you're any more qualified or that I'm any more qualified. It just means that I've decided I'm going to do that. And so you can decide you're going to do it. And we have to decide we're going to do it. I don't think that education and the institutions of education give us more give us more of what we're looking for. They don't, it doesn't really qualify us. It doesn't really prepare us. It doesn't really give us the insights, the intuition and the creative capacity to make massive change or to help people or to provide healing modalities or to be an inspiration. Like, you know, if we're gonna be an expert on herbs and natural medicine, you have to study that. There is no education system that gives us that. The, the medical system has been hijacked by the pharmaceutical companies. There's no authority who's going to tell us how to be an herbalist. You know, We have to pursue that for ourselves. Yes, seek out mentorship. Yes, seek out a new crab bucket to hold you and give you permission to be on this path of learning. But really, it, it can all happen in a split second. It can all happen in an instant where you decide I'm going to be the authority here. I'm going to, you know, and I'll just say for myself as a coach, and I've been a professional coach for four years now, helping people, people come to me and put their, their lives, their livelihood in my hands and say, here, help me. I literally 
use my creative capacity to intuitively help people with where they're at. I use my intuition, I use my creativity, I use my vision, I use my sixth sense, you know, and it works, it works. If I tried to have doctors tell me how to help people heal, it just wouldn't work. There is no authority, there's no pill, there's no pharmaceutical that's gonna help people truly heal their lives. It comes from us. We've gotta be the healers, the mystics, the shamans, the, the plant medicine people. We've got to do it. You know, we've got to be our own authority. So I always say self-referencing, be radically self-referencing. The more radically self-referencing you can be, the more successful you're going to be. I agree. Well said. And I want to say, I know in the industry you're in with health, um, there can be a stigma around people thinking it's wrong to make money on that. I know there's some big health YouTubers uh, that weren't monetized for a while. They didn't get monetized because they had a lot of people coming at them thinking you shouldn't be making money doing something like this. So I think there's a stigma around that. I don't agree with it. I think if you're, if you're making money off something like this and it's something that really helps the world, then I think you have even more to offer because you have those resources and that abundance and those funds. So I don't agree with that, but what do you have to say about, about that? You know, I think it's so critical that we allow ourselves to be in abundance consciousness. And abundance consciousness is a win, win, win situation for all. If everybody's winning in the situation, that's what we want to seek out. There is no right and wrong. I've given up on the debate of what's right and wrong in my life, and I only look for win, win, or not win, win. That's my barometer, and that's what I gauge as to whether I'm on the right path or not. And so it's never going to be, um, you know, it's never going to be easy to understand. Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> that doesn't happen for me very often because my mind is usually like giving me good train of thought. Well, you're allowed. You're so well-spoken for hours at a time. So you're allowed to lose your chain of thought. Yeah. Thank but, you. but yeah, I know there's a big stigma around it. Some people think it's so wrong and I'm sure it's not only this industry, other industries as well, where you're really giving back or I mean, a lot of things, people think it's wrong to make a lot of money at it. So, or make any money at it, be accepting any money. So. Yeah. So I wanted to say that um, there's really a lot of lack consciousness in the spiritual community too. people who consider themselves spiritual or awake, you know, so if we're on this spiritual journey and we're on this awakening journey that it really, it should be a free flow and that there doesn't need to be any monetary exchange. Where does that come from? Maybe it's a vow of poverty that we take with us from a past life or something like that, who knows, but it's not abundance consciousness because abundance consciousness says everybody can win. Win for me, a win for you, a win for the environment, the plants, the animals, a win for everyone. That's what we're after. And so if we're working toward win, 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 we get to thrive, we get to have material success. And really you wanna make more money, help more people. It's, it's an energetic exchange. So money is, not intrinsically valuable. We know this. There is no value in money itself. Money is a shadow of the value. The value is inside of us. If I cultivate immense value within myself and then I share that value, there will automatically be an exchange of money. And the money itself, the physical cash or the numbers in the bank, are just a shadow, a reflection. Uh, the shadows dancing on Plato's cave, essentially here, is what I'm talking about, of the real exchange of value. <clears throat> so if we're not cultivating value within ourselves, we're not going to see the value in the exchange. And therefore, we're not going to see the value in the reflection or the shadow of cash or money. So really, for anyone who says that we shouldn't be trading our services or spiritual ideas for money, I would say cultivate immense value within yourself and share it and see what happens. That's it. That's the only conversation to be having. And we, and we will see that we're sharing this immense value that we've cultivated within ourselves because we're seeing win, win, win. So we're not looking for money. We're not trying to make money. That's not the goal. It's never been the goal. 
I, I don't pursue money. I pursue win-win situations. And I know that I've hit the win-win situations where I, when I cultivate value within myself, I share that value and then I see win-win situations occurring. So my Raw Vegan Heroes membership, for instance, it's a paid membership. It's actually 75% off right now for a limited time. And it's the best, cheapest deal I've ever offered my membership. So it's, I know how much value I'm giving, <clears throat> right? And then when I share that value with others, I get tons of people signing up for my membership. They're getting the help they need. I'm getting the, the income that I need. That's a win-win. You see, so I just try to find ways to give more value. I'm discounting my membership right now, 75% off, because I know that that provides value. So that's the uh, trick to money. It's not money itself. We never want to pursue money for the sake of money. We want to cultivate value and share it. And money will be a byproduct of that. So, Well said, okay. once again. I love that topic, Jillian. I love that topic. And I just want to ask, so when you started your membership group, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe a year or two ago, right? Maybe a couple years ago? Two years ago, coming up in November this fall. So it's not even been two years. Amazing. When you first started that, did you feel awkward at first or uncomfortable at first sort of asking money from people for something like that? Or did you get your head in a great space first and you were like, were there things you did to really realize you're adding value? Because I think it's ingrained in us in situations like that that it's wrong to ask for money, right? I think so many of us feel that way. So were there any tricks you did or any deep work you did to sort of change your mentality before you launched that business? Yeah, it's such a great question. <clears throat> Absolutely, okay, because when we start to exchange that value, we don't know that we actually have value. This is what I coach people with, okay? I have coached privately and in groups over the years, uh, lots of people on this exact topic. I have private clients who want to do what I do, who want to be a coach, and they come to me and they pay me to be their mentor and their coach, and they are in gridlock with themselves around how do I ask for money? How do I know I have the value to actually help someone? This is the biggest hurdle. And the way I got over the hurdle was I started by doing one-on-one uh, -on -one phone calls with people for $50 because I felt $50 is not that much money. If even if I mess it up royally and I don't provide any value, it's not really the, the, a big loss. So that's what I did. I took it down to the, to the step where I knew it was a worthy, worthwhile exchange. I, and that's where you got to start. So maybe your worthiness, your sense of value is at 50 bucks, but in another person's sense of value is at $3,000. You know, it's just, in our own sense of value and self-worth, it's really just made up out of thin air. There is no intrinsic value in one person over another person. The only value that would make one person charge $50 and another person charge $3,000 for their coaching is how they feel about their own value. So that's why I say, mm -hmm. let's cultivate the value inside of ourselves, whatever that takes personal development, leadership mm -hmm. classes, read books, um, prepare raw foods, become a raw chef, like cultivate the value. And then you're going to be like, well, darn, I have got so much value. This has got to be $3,000 for my coaching program because that's just what it is. So <clears throat> that's what I help people with is understanding how to cultivate value within themselves. And that's where We've got to start with whatever we feel is the proper exchange and it's awkward and there's mm -hmm. no other way to get over the awkwardness except to just do it. And I've had clients that have paid me lots of money to teach them how to do this and they still don't do it. They still can't do it. They're really in gridlock with themselves. I, I've experienced it where they want it, they've paid me to teach them and they just don't. So. Who are we going to be? Are we going to be the person that just stops dead in our tracks, frightened like a deer in the headlights and doesn't know how to move? Or are we going to be someone who takes that first step and says, let me get on the phone with someone for $50 and see if I can help them. That's mm -hmm. what I did. <laughs> and so my <laughs> little $50 call, like, can I help this woman on the end of the call? My first client was a woman in New York who wanted to lose weight <clears throat> and she hired me to coach her on our calls. 
to this day, I still don't know if I did a good job, but I did it. I got on the phone with her and look where it's led me now, you know? And I think the person you find what works for you and what different personal development techniques work for you. I think it's so important because truly we can be our own worst enemies otherwise, right? Yeah. Well, our ego will talk us down from what we need most and it will sabotage us. Our ego is out to kill us. It's out to literally sabotage us. It literally is. If you, if you want to understand that, read A Course in Miracles. It's my second favorite book in my Amazon store books. I mean, literally isolation, self-isolation and self-sabotage is what we're up against. And so that's what we've got to take on. We've got to take that on and it's uncomfortable. Look, mm -hmm. there's no success without being uncomfortable. We've got to get mm -hmm. out of our comfort zone. We've got to get willing. We've got to get hungry. I mean, success is created either from inspiration or desperation, one or the other. So you choose. Mm -hmm. you know. And I think it's important people take action and realize maybe if they're pursuing their passion and maybe it's going to take a little while to be perfect at it, but the more you practice, the better you'll get. And you have to just go through those hard times. And that's when you're growing and you'll get, you'll get there, you know? Absolutely. Yes. If your heart's in it and you're pursuing it and you're really dedicated to serving and helping, you will get there. You will create success. You will make money. You will have fulfillment. That's a, a given. It is a certainty. It's a, the law of the universe. You know, mm -hmm. it's the law of cause and effect. It's the law of, um, you know, the, the law of, frequency you know what we align with is what we have that's why we don't get what we want we get who we are so if you pursue your heart's calling you're in service to others that beingness will generate those leadership results which is money success fulfillment okay that's amazing and i know there's some people who feel like if they pursue their passions and they start doing their passion and say they've turned that into a living maybe then they feel like it's work and it doesn't feel like their passion anymore. So I was wondering, do you have any words or any advice or what would you have to say to people in that situation, whether they're in that situation now and it's feeling like work. So they're like, Hey, what the heck? It doesn't feel like it used to feel. It doesn't feel like it did when it was just my passion, or maybe they're not quite there yet. They're pursuing it and they're fearful that that might happen. Yeah, that's interesting. I think um, the way I look at it as an entrepreneur, I either going to, I'm going to go work at a job that I'm going to get yelled at or fired from, right? I told the story about every job I've ever worked at. I just, it just doesn't work. I'm a terrible employee, but I'm a great business leader, you know, and all my businesses are successful. But as soon as I work for somebody else's company, they fire me. Why is that? Well, sometimes we just have to show up and do the hard work, whether we want to or not. A professional does what they know they need to do, whether they feel like it or not. And an amateur goes off of what they feel like doing. And that's the difference between a professional and an amateur is I show up and I make a YouTube video or I do marketing strategies or I do the work I need to do, whether I feel like it or not, because I know what the results are gonna be. And I'm after the results. So I'm forward focused, I'm results focused, I'm vision focused, right? Whereas an amateur is going to be focused on how they feel. Oh, I don't want to. I'm tired today. Oh, I, that's not really in my flow for my day. And I don't really feel like doing that. You'll never get the results. That kind of person, you know, the amateur, they've got to probably be an employee for someone else's business and let someone else take the risk. Let someone else have the vision. Let someone else be led by results and let someone else show up whether they feel like it or not. It's one or the other. Mm hmm Okay. And I'm also wondering in this digital age, I know a lot of people wonder, do they have to, depending what their passion is or their niche, do you think that they have to build a large online community before they start monetizing with something? Do you think they need to first focus on building a big community first? I know that stops a lot of people from pursuing things. <clears throat> yeah, it's a good question. Honestly, we just need to build a list. Yes. The, the order of things is to build a list, sell to the list. Okay. So the list could be a following or this could be an Instagram account that has followers or YouTube, but it's got to be some sort of a, a following. I call it a list based on an email list because really we're in the age of email marketing. The email is still the king of marketing. We want to get into people's inbox if we can. So build a list, figure out a way to give away something for free, build an email list, and then sell something to that list, a $50 phone call. That's how you do it. It's that simple. Build a list, sell to the list. 
If you don't have a list, if you don't have an email list, you don't have an information age business at all. So the more, the bigger the list size you have, the more successful, more money you can generate. So I know some seven figure earning coaches that earn a million to 10 million. In fact, my business coach is a, a, an eight figure earner. She earns $20 million a year. And her list is um, the reason she earns that much money. And she talks about it all the time. So she says, if you have a hundred thousand person list, you're going to be a seven figure earner. So what I'm working on right now in my life is to get my list to 100,000 people because then I will be able to be a seven figure earner. But if, if we have smaller lists, we'll earn less money, but that's really the bottom line. Build an audience and sell to the audience. You can't do it the other way around. You can't like say, hey, I'm selling this. Does anybody wanna buy it? No, you've gotta build an audience, build rapport, build give away value. And that's the key. We build an audience because we give quality value to them for free. And then they are enrolled by us. Then they believe us. They follow us. They like us. We are the influencer. And then we can make a pitch, make an offer and serve them, you know, mm -hmm. and serve them. And so then, so I'm it. wondering, how do you deal with, or what do you feel about then when you build the online community and then you start monetizing? What are your thoughts around the people that then obviously there are some people that come and say, oh, here's somebody else trying to make money off of me on here, on this, on Instagram or on YouTube. What are your thoughts on that? Um, haters, haters. <laughs> okay. Look, if we're not, if we don't have haters, we're not doing something correct. Okay. We need to get to a place where we have people berating us or questioning us and questioning our, um, you know, our integrity because ultimately they want to be us, okay? If we don't have people questioning and hating on us, we're not doing it right. So we can't be afraid to create a dividing line with our message, polarize an audience, create haters, create super fans, because that's the information age that we're living in now. And it's a beautiful thing because it provides freedom. It provides financial freedom, time freedom, you know, money and location freedom. I just moved to Austin, Texas earlier this year because I have location freedom. I can live anywhere in the world. And I moved to Austin, Texas for multiple reasons. And it's a great place for me to be right now. I could go do my work on the beach in Costa Rica too, if I wanted to. And um, this is the power of an information age model. If we have to deal with some haters in order to get that freedom model, so be it. It's part of the business model. It's part of, it's just par for the course. Absolutely. And what would you say to somebody who wants to get started pursuing their passion, but they say, Shane, I literally have no money to get started on that. There's no extra money in their budget to start building that business or pursuing that. What kind of advice would you give for them if they are in those, sh if they're in that situation? Uh, if we have a passion for something enough, we will find the way. Hold the vision, not the circumstance. If you ever focus on the how, how am I gonna do this? You've lost it. You will not create it. You have to focus on the vision. The vision will organize the universe around that vision so that it will give you the opportunity, the doorway, the person, the thing will happen, the opportunity will open for you to move forward with that vision. If you focus on how am I gonna to afford to start a business or this or that or the other thing, it's just you're in the minutia, you're in the details, and you're in lack consciousness. So I started my clothing store business, which was really successful. I made $600,000 flipping thrift and vintage stuff. I started that business with, I think I had $3,000 cash and a $5,000 credit card. That's all I had. I literally had nothing else to my name at that time in my life. I was dead broke. I was living on unemployment. Actually, I was receiving an unemployment check because I was unemployed at the mo at the time. And I took this little bit of cash that I had saved up and I just flipped it, you know, but I never focused on how am I going to do this? I always focused on the vision. I wanted that clothing store. I saw the tight, I saw the picture of the store. I saw what it looked like. I even felt like, what does my customer feel like when they walk into that store? That's all I ever focused on is the feeling the colors, this, the name, the style, the font. I never focused on the how. Amazing.
Amazing. Well, this has been great, Shane. I feel like you've added so much value to the viewers today. It's been truly amazing talking to you. So many aha moments, I feel like. And I'm just wondering if you have, before we go, any closing remarks, any tips or advice for somebody who wants to pursue their passion? It comes down to starting at square one, which is self-worth. We've got to get out of our own way, realize it's okay to fail, and that there is a seed planted in our heart that is our unique signature and our unique gift, and only we can bring it to the world. Our neighbor, our friends and family can't do what we came here to do. So tapping into our self-worth gives us that signature, our unique divine signature that is our gift to the world. We need you, the world needs you and everyone's unique signature. If we all were in that self-empowerment place, the world would be a really great place. It would be a creative, dynamic, free-flowing, open, energetic world. So it's your duty, it's your obligation to this divine life that we found ourselves in to get out of your own way and feel the worthiness of having your dream fulfilled, you know, your mission fulfilled. Feel the worthiness of it. You deserve it. And just say it to yourself over and over and over again. I deserve it. I am worthy. I feel worthy of having this. I am creating this. Just mantra it over and over. Write it on your bathroom mirror and lipstick or whatever. I'm serious. Write it out. I am worthy of having this. I am going to create this. And then, um, you know, focus on the vision of what you really want in your heart the most of all and never focus on how. And that combination, oh, and then also feel gratitude for what you currently have, even if it's not even, even anywhere close to what your dream is, feel gratitude for what you have right now. And that combination, getting out of your own way, feeling the worthiness, holding the vision, saying the mantras that I am worthy and feeling gratitude in your heart for what you have right now, that is the magic combination that can allow you to create anything in this world, no matter what it is. And you can go from you know, poverty to world leader, changing the world, anything you want, with that combination. And that's what I do. I live by that every single day, literally. Beautiful, Shane. I think that's amazing. And I wanna thank our viewers so much for tuning in today. I truly hope this video added some value to your day. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss more videos just like this one. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.